Um, I am excited to cover day three today of manifesting our $1,000. And I uh, was sent a link to a book to buy that follows this entire thing. And Aubrey was like, I didn't even really realize that this was a workbook and that we could do this. So I went on Amazon and I bought it. And so if you are interested in doing the workbook, I bought it yesterday and it's going to come tomorrow. So if you order it like today, you'll probably get it in the next, like probably by Friday. Um, it's called Unleash. Here, I'll send, I'll uh, share my screen. It's called Unleash Your Inner Money Babe. And it's 23.34 to buy the actual workbook. And so I bought this because I felt like it was going to be a good investment because I'm sure I will do this again with a group of people. I absolutely love this and want to do it over and over and over. So before we talk about day three, uh, let's talk about some celebrations. What are some things that you're celebrating? I'll go first. Not all unmute at once. I'll go first. Um, so I am celebrating the fact that I'm going into a valley. Um, yes, I'm celebrating it because yesterday I was just, hi, April. Yesterday I was talking to April last night. Well, all day I had just like a really, I kept saying I'm having a bad day. Like I kept feeling like my day sucks. This is not a good day. This is not a good day. I was feeling like that. Like any, it's like the Murphy's law, like anything that can go wrong goes wrong. Um, it was like, it started with like little things and then it got like bigger things, bigger things, bigger things. And it was like affecting everyone around me. Like it wasn't just like, oh, I stubbed my toe, but it was like hearing things from different friends, different family members, different things. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like such a crappy day. Like, I cannot wait for this day to be over. I'm overwhelmed. I sat in this office at this computer for 12 hours yesterday and was like, I just like, it was just such an awful day. So I was um, journaling last night, midnight, I was doing my homework for day three, for day two that Aubrey gave me. And I was really trying to like, just journal and think and pray. And it like hit me that I was like, oh my gosh, like today was a, today was actually a good day, which was hard to say that because I didn't feel good. But I knew that I was entering a valley where I was about to make a crazy impact on people. And every time that I'm in the valley, I always am just like in this place where I'm in my head and I'm just like thinking of all these things and worrying and like don't want to take the next step that I know I need to take, but I'm trying to like break through fear and do it anyway and just do all these things that are uncomfortable and I was like praying all day yesterday. And usually if I wake up and I spend time with God and I pray and I do all that stuff, I feel really good all day. And so it was weird that I didn't feel like that, but I realized it's because I'm actually going through this change that's about to happen where I'm realizing that what I'm doing isn't working. It's creating that friction that I've talked about before, that when you start to feel that friction in your life, where things just aren't going the way that you need them to go right now, it's the friction is growing it's strength internally, whether you're becoming mentally strong or physically strong in the gym, people do that. You know, when you're, you're physically creating resistance in your muscles and you're stretching and you're breaking them and then your muscle gets bigger. So it's the same thing that happens inside of our heads too. So I'm celebrating the fact that although things are getting shaky, I know that it is for the best. I know that it is really good. I know that it's making me stronger. I know that it's bringing me to my next step of my journey of where I'm supposed to go. And it's not easy, of course. And I talk about God all the time, but it's not easy for me just to like obey and do what I'm supposed to do. So um, yeah, I'm excited for this next chapter that I'm getting into this next, I guess, quarter, if you will, um, because I kind of work in like, groups of three months. I feel like I'm a very like a, what is that called? Not cyclical. Is that what it is? Cyclical person, like where you work on certain like cycles. Um, I think that's what it's called, but 
that's kind of how I am. And if you pay attention to yourself, you'll notice that you kind of go in cycles too. Maybe it'll be a couple of weeks, maybe it's a couple of months, but try to just pay attention to that. Like where your head's at, where your brain's at, how are you feeling? Um, keeping a daily journal will help you too. So um, celebrating, even though I don't really want to, but I know that good things are happening and good things are coming. And I got myself some organization done yesterday and a bunch of tedious, little things that were on my to-do list that I just like needed gone. And so it felt good to get that, to get that stuff done. What about everyone else? You guys can put it in the chat too, or I always like when you guys unmute and talk too. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Tracy. Um, for me, my celebration is I took some time off. As you know, I went on vacation. I really tried to focus on that and our family. And I still somehow signed up an ambassador. Um, I think it was from the weeks before doing the IPAs and reaching out and sending out the samples and really um, working that before I went on vacation. And I mean, I was literally like unplugged. I did not go on any like meetings. I didn't do anything. I didn't even take anything with me except my own personal stuff to take. And, uh, I was really surprised when she was like, okay, I signed up. And you're like, okay. Yeah. But now I just have to navigate her way of wanting to do things. So I was going to see if like, when you have time, if you and I can chat a little bit alone, um, <clears throat> anytime this week. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just send me a message on messenger so that I don't forget um, just ask me when I'm free and then I'll look at my calendar and we'll put something in there, but that's so cool. And what you experienced really was the system we have, which is ironically how you signed up for me. I was on vacation in Tennessee with Cala and I was like, Oh, Oh my gosh, this girl just like signed up. She just joined my team. This is crazy. Like and I just remember thinking, how cool is it? Because that trip, I didn't work at all either. Like I didn't bring anything, no compute. Oh, I think I did bring my computer. I did bring my computer because I did one call, one morning call with you guys. But other than that, I didn't do anything. And I was like, this is so cool. This is true freedom. Now, let me tell you something. The system does all the hard work for you and it helps you to duplicate. The number one biggest thing mistake that anybody can make like the biggest mistake is by not following the system and the system actually starts from the second you sign up you are plugged into our system actually before you even sign up you're already part of our system you just don't know it yet so when you sign up you go through the process to launch your business and do what you're supposed to. If you do all of the things in the way that you're told to do them and you go through, then you sign an ambassador and you tell them this is the way we do things and you put them through the exact same system and don't let them deviate off of that. You set really good expectations before they sign. After they sign, you let them know what they're doing next. And then you continue on that system. Now what happens is people like I heard you say, I need to launch her how she wants to be, how she wants to do this. Now that's okay. You can, some people are like, I have a ton of family and friends. I want to tell them all about Q. And other people are like, I don't want to ask anyone that I already know. I have an influence on Instagram or I want to build an online business. That's totally fine. You know, that's how you want to do the business is up to you. Some people do craft shows and vendor shows and they rent out a booth and they stand there and they sell their products. Other people would never do that. So it doesn't matter how you network, how you network is totally up to you, but you have to network, obviously, like we talked about yesterday, you have to network, you have to be opening up and finding more people and getting connected to them. But I, it's, it's funny that you say this because this is exactly what I was thinking over the last couple of days. So I'm a numbers person. I'm a data person. I need to like see how things are going. I need to see how they're moving and looking at the team as a whole, I can really tell that, uh, because not a lot of people. So outside of my people that I've brought in, so not looking at me, looking at everyone else on the team, all of the new ambassadors who have joined in the last couple of months 
like nobody has got promoted. So what that shows is that we can sign people. Now we're good at that. We weren't signing that many people. So that's what our focus has been on. It's like, okay, let's just get the people signing and then we'll train them, which is how you're supposed to go. So people are starting, the numbers are starting to pick up. We're starting to bring in more people, but the people that are coming in now aren't getting promoted. And so it's like, why aren't they getting promoted? And there's a couple of reasons. My people that I brought in and not that I'm amazing because by no means am I awesome or have figured this thing out because I still rack my brain constantly. Like, what am I doing wrong? What do I do next? Like I'm in it with you, but I made a list last night. My last five ambassadors that I've brought in all have been promoted and all are still here and all are like going to convention and all have auto ships on and all are still like, I'm in it to win it like Tracy. And so it's awesome because I'm like, okay, this is working. So I've been wanting to share a little bit more about how I'm training ambassadors. And it really isn't like a training that I'm doing because I'm doing less work and I'm spending less time, but I'm getting better results because I'm literally so clear about who I'm looking for. I make people apply to work with me and actually have turned down people, actually have turned them down. And I set that expectation on Zoom before they even sign up and tell them exactly what I'm looking for. And I don't sugarcoat it. I try to scare people off where I was telling people, I want someone who's going to commit to, to three months to 90 days. And now I'm telling people a year, do not sign up and join my team. If you are not going to commit to a year because you're going to waste my time and you're going to waste your time. Don't do it. But people are more drawn to that than they are repelled from that because they want someone who's strong in their belief. You want to join someone who's going to get you promoted. You don't want to join someone who's not. So if somebody presents themselves as a strong coach and mentor, you don't really have to have all the answers. You could be brand new where you don't know anything, but you have this determination in your soul like April has, where it's like, she always tells me like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be there 1000%. I know it. I've always known it. It's been since I was a kid, I knew it. Her and I have talked about that. Like she just knows that she knows that she knows. And when she joined network marketing, she didn't really know anything about network marketing, but she had belief in herself that she could help someone and get them connected to the right people, plug them into our system that does all the hard work and they can be successful. So it's with that belief, but um, I'm going to do a training, a more uh, formal training. I'll probably do it. Um, I'll record it on Zoom um, and then I will post it on YouTube so that everyone else can have it and see it and stuff. But just some of my like little tips that I have been finding to work when I'm recruiting new people, just to make sure that they know what to, excuse me, they know what to expect. And then after they're good to go to and they last a lot longer. So yes, Tracy, the second someone signs an ambassador, you go and grab your, your leader and say, Hey, I just signed an ambassador. What do I do? And usually I, I see notifications when people sign people. So I'll message and say, Oh, congrats on your new ambassador. I'm so excited. Sometimes we miss them. So you should, if you haven't had success Signing a new ambassador, training them and getting them promoted all by yourself yet, you need to be connected to someone who can help you. Even if it's like me, where you're like, hey, I just, I signed this new girl. I just want to make sure like I'm on the right path. I do this, this, and this, and then this, right? Okay, cool. Or like, does this sound okay? Should I say this? Like anything like that, that you want to like throw, throw at me or bounce ideas off me. I am all about it. I will definitely help you do that. Um, so great job though, signing an ambassador and unplugging that is like, phenomenal. That's so good. Um, okay. Who else has a celebration? Let's take one more celebration before we talk about day three. Um, I signed somebody, well, tried to sign somebody last night, but <laughs> she's, <laughs> well, I forgot because she's already a customer. And then we went, we're like going through the process of signing her as an ambassador. And then I forgot oh, yeah. that we have to upgrade her account. So she, oh, so she's going to, sorry, I just like saw all the traffic and I'm like, oh God. Um, <laughs> she's going to contact customer service today. 
and um and join and join and she is actually somebody who i met at the rise conference which is how i got connected to kristen adams oh two years goodness. ago um yeah so i met her there and she we've just kind of been friends at, like not like good friends or anything she lives in like boston new england like on the east coast and she's basically just been following me and so a couple weeks ago i think three weeks ago she bought sleep spray and she, she kept asking me she's like what is this what is a sleep spray does it really work does it really work so she finally bought it and she loved it and then um last week she was like okay what and I, she's already watched an opportunity call like she's already gotten on a call um and then finally she was like okay so what's the deal here like can we can you really do this and i was like super i had a call with her on friday night and then um i made her she wanted to sign up then and i told her no i told her to think about everything that i had told her Good. i sent her some more info um I told her to sleep on it, give it like 24 hours, 48 hours. And, um, and then today we were supposed to talk on Sunday and then she got tied up. And then today when I got, or yesterday, when I got on with her, I said, okay, so how do you feel? And she's like, yeah, I want to do it. And it turns out her sister has been with Arbon like for years and her daughter is also with Arbon. And she already oh, has know. like three people that she's basically already sold product to. And, um, and so she's going to try and recruit her sister and her daughter over. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. That is so crazy. Like you can see just how fast one ambassador can lead to the next. And I mean, that's really like, if you think about it, Francesca Fields, she, I mean, really Kristen brought in Tara and then Tara brought in someone who brought in Fran, Fran brought in Brittany Hitch. All yeah. those people were just like normal people that were working women, moms, all of them were, and they just wanted something better for their life. All of them. So you can have those people on your Facebook and your Instagram right now. You can even be connected to those people and not realize it because you're not really looking at them. You're too close. So that is so cool. Congratulations. I love that you made her wait because now it's so awesome because you don't have to worry. Like I, I put it on my list to go through and message all of my new ambassadors and make sure that they have a convention ticket. And normally that would make me nervous. Like, Ooh, how am I going to tell them that they have to go to Texas? Like I'm so nervous, but I already told them. I already told people like when we, when we first signed, I was like, you're going to this thing. You have to go. It's awesome. In order to be coached, you have to show up. So then when it popped up, like everyone was like, oh my gosh, I bought my ticket. I bought my ticket. I bought my ticket. You know, everyone was like already excited because I already told them about it. So if you just do it the right way and say the right things and don't be too scared, like, oh, I'm going to scare them away. Just have comfort in this thing. And if you need to write it down and stare at it or tattoo it on your hand or make it into a sticker and put it on your notebook, whatever you have to do, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person and you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. So if it's the right person standing in front of you and they're going to sign up, you can't really say the wrong thing to them. You're not going to freak them out. You're not going to turn them away. You're not, if they're meant for this and they're the right person, they're going to be here. And if they're not meant to be here, it doesn't matter what you say, what you offer them. Like sometimes you have those people where you're like, oh my gosh, I have literally offered everything to this person to sign up and they still aren't signing up. We're like, I'll give you a free Q core. I'll pay for your $35 enrollment fee. I'll pay for your app every month. I'll pick you up. I'll like, whatever it is, the more things you offer actually, and the more they say no, the more that it shows you they're not your person. And if they finally said, okay, fine, I'm going to do it. They are never going to take ownership in their own business. All they're going to want is more, 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 more. They're not going to work hard. They're not going to be your person. And what is it going to do? Yeah, you feel like you have a victory because they signed up, but now they're going to suck all your energy from you, make you feel like a crappy leader because they're going to turn around and quit or ghost you and never talk to you again. Like some of my ambassadors do. And it's like, really? Like you really can't respond 
Like you, you literally can't talk to me anymore now, not even about Q, but even just about life stuff. You can't even respond now. Like you're that much of a coward. Like you're so scared of me. Like, what am I going to do to you? I'm not your boss. Like people just don't see that, but they do. And it's just how it goes. So if you just need to remember that, like you can't, you can't blow it. You're not going to blow it. Just say it and do it. And don't ever cheapen your value. Don't ever discount what it is that you're doing. Maybe you want to run an incentive to get people off the fence, but don't run something that shows that you're desperate. And if you say, hey, free shipping for the next three people, and then you're messaging people and it's five days later and you're like, I'm still offering free shipping. If you want to do it, I'll still do it for you. Are you there? Hey, can you do it? Did you see my promo? Do you want to get on? No, like, no, we're not doing that. We're not desperate. We're not begging people because it's just going to be worse for you down the road. I promise you that right there is what actually makes a lot of people leave network marketing because you give it your all, you see some success, you sign these people up, you did it the wrong way, they weren't the right people and now they leave and now you question everything you've ever done because now you just fell in rank and you clearly suck and you're not meant to do this. And then our thinking goes on and what we think goes to what we do, goes to our results. So um, that kind of goes with day three today. Go ahead, Alicia. Were you going to oh, she that? actually, yeah, she actually got on the team call last night too. Cause we talked like, right. We were like on the phone an hour, right. On a zoom, right. An hour, right before. And I'm like, we're actually having our call tonight. So why don't you just pop on? And, um, she, I don't think she stayed the whole call because she gets up really, really early in the morning. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, she was on, she was on the call last night. Oh, see already yeah. like doing the things. Okay. Yeah. Um, Karen. Yeah. Sorry. I know you want to do day three, but I just oh, have like fine. one quick thing is like, I feel like, okay. So I know that, um, telling people that they need to do like the application is so important because I actually just happened, just had that happen to me, but it's, I just want to say that it's been a big hurdle for me to get over is the fact that every single day we're looking for ambassadors and I'm like doing my IPA, talking to all these people. So when somebody says that they want to join, it's like, oh, finally. And then, but, but then like when you rush, cause this literally just happened to me, got girls, <laughs> I was going to say guys, but we're all girls here. Um, this literally just happened to me. Like I spend all time doing my IPAs, building these relationships. This, this lady, she's awesome. And I know she could do awesome, but she, um, okay. she, um, got on zoom with me and she was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And like, I got so excited, like, yes, she's going to do it. Like, finally, what I've been doing is like paying off, but like, like, I just wanted to like, I guess like re up what Taryn's saying about how important it is because we get so like excited. And so my question to you, Taryn, though, is the last few people that you signed up that were interested that did the application that have promoted, did those people reach out to you or did you reach out to them or was it like a mix of both? Um, so it was a mix of both. The last two people I signed up, um, the conversation started with IPAs. So like the one girl I had originally wished happy birthday, like five years ago when I was in my previous company. And then I asked her, I said, Hey, question for you. Um, have you ever tried my magic mom drink is what I used to say, which is like, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe it. So you say my magic mom drink. And she was like, no, what's that? And I was like, Oh my gosh, let me send you a sample. And then she ghosted me. And then I kind of talked to her back and forth and then we'd stop talking. I didn't even know, I didn't even remember ever talking to her. And I didn't know that she was still following me, but she tells me now that she had been following me for years and saw my success. She never interacted with anything. She just sat back in the corner and then came out and the other girl, um, I had wished her happy birthday. And then like two weeks later, she was, she asked me, I posted at convention, I posted, um, stories and, um, I was posting, um, uh, in my stories, everyone getting their big checks. And then I posted like my, I made a TikTok video of Kristen and said like my mentor and like them calling her name and her going on stage and getting her check. And 
she replied after I was literally pulling in my driveway after convention and she replied and said, dang girl, what do you do for work? That's a lot of money. And I was like, oh yeah, hey, I actually do network marketing. Um, it's basically the way you sell products and just kind of explained it to her. And then I was like, um, I'm like, you have an awesome brand. You would be so good at this. You should watch one of our calls. And then I ended up sending her a recording. After she watched the recording, she was like, oh my gosh, I'm all in. This sounds amazing. I said, okay, great. First, I need you to fill out this application and you need to fill this out first. And then let's get on Zoom and talk. And so by the time we got on Zoom, I already saw like how serious she was. And then when I got on Zoom, I just made it sound, I just like tried to sell her out of it. Um, just like told her like how serious I was that I was looking for someone specific that if she wasn't my right person or had doubts, she should just wait and be a customer. Um, and she was like, no, 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 no. Like I'm ready. This is what I've wanted. I'm here for it. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So those two actually, you know, IPAs that happens to me all the time where I'm doing IPAs where I'm commenting on their stuff or applying to their stuff. And then all of a sudden they're in my inbox, like, Hey, tell me more about your business. So that's usually how that goes. Um, so it was kind of like a mix, a mix between it all, because some people totally found me like Tracy totally found me. Aubrey totally found me for, through YouTube. Um, Sam, um, so I signed her recently. I was like intentionally hunting for Sam. And then I was trying to get her. Uh, I was trying to get her for a long time. Like when I saw that she was pregnant, I was like, oh yeah, now we're going to have something to talk about because she was pregnant with her first baby. And so I talked to her like crazy asking her questions. How does she feel? Oh, read this book. Oh, what are you going to do about food? Are you going to breastfeed? Here's the, here's my tips. Here's what you should follow. Like I was trying to give her as much value as possible and just to build that relationship. And then she had the baby and then she had, then she was like feeling better. And I told her, I was like, you, she was taking my product. She was a customer and cause I had sent her some samples. And so I told her, I was like, girl, you should do this with me. Why not? You already take the products. You already love them. I'm sure you have a couple people that you can sell them to and make some extra money. And then I said, my friend, April, she had a baby and didn't want to go back to work. And she made like a couple grand in her first like month or two. It was crazy. So maybe that could be you. Maybe you could make a couple hundred, but you should check out our call. I'm doing one tonight. I'm actually presenting. Do you want to get on and listen? And she said, yes. And then she got on. And then like a week later she signed up. So that's kind of how that happened too. So they're a mix of everyone. It always usually is that to answer your question. Why's Thank that? you. <laughs> Thank you. It's just like, I don't like for some reason for a while, I was thinking like, you know, we're asking these people to join and then it's like, like, oh my gosh, you should do this with me. And then like, oh, but you have to fill out, like fill out this application. Like, I don't know. I just, if anybody else was thinking of it, like me, like I thought that those questions could help them as well, because that was like something I had to like get over. Like, like, I don't know, like I'm not too good for them or something, but they just really have to understand, like, you know, we're just kind of setting the expectations with that application is the way I'm thinking of it in my head now, rather than like, oh, I'm so good that they need to like fill that out. You know, like I'm not like better than them or something. It's just like literally our expectations because people will quit like so quickly. And like you always say, it's just exhausting. So lesson learned with numero uno <laughs> on to the next. <laughs> Yeah, April, I did that with that new girl. I I had her fill out the application after we talked. And that was, it was actually, that was like one of my, like why I wanted her to wait to join. And I said, hey, you know, like after we talked about everything, I was like, okay, so don't join right now. Like give it 24 hours, go on, fill out this application. This I didn't call it an application. I called it a questionnaire. Um, Cause I, I felt like, I don't know. I just felt weird calling it an application. So I just said, go on and fill out my questionnaire, you know, make sure that you can answer yes to all of the questions. Um, and then if you have any questions from there, you know, let me know. And then we'll circle back in a couple of days. And it, it just worked out really well to do it that way. I like calling it a questionnaire. Yeah, it really is just how you think, because I don't want to ever call it a questionnaire. I want people to know that you're applying to work with me. 
Like, that's great that you want to work, that you want to do this. Uh, I make everyone apply to join my team because I really have hard boundaries. This is what I say. I have really hard boundaries with my family and I only take on about four, maybe five people a month because I know that's how I can honestly give them my attention with everything else that I'm doing. I have a pretty big team. You can even say this if you have, if you're, I mean, if you're pro and you have four people on your team, like I already have a group of people that I work with and lead and coach and mentor. And so taking on new people, I just want to make sure that I'm setting everyone else up for success. So go ahead and apply. But I think that that, that confidence in me comes from me working in the HR industry. Like I was an HR rep and would tell people all the time that they had to apply for the job. Like that's kind of how you have to think of it is that you're the, you're the manager, you're the trainer, you're looking to train people. You're the manager at Panera. That's like, okay, I need to train four new baristas. Are you going to like, just take the four people that walk through the door that one doesn't have a car, one can't pass a background check. The other one has crappy availability. The other one has crappy work ethic. Or are you going to interview them and be like, do you have reliable transportation? What is your schedule like? How, how many hours can you work? What could come up that would make you call into your shift? Like all of those things, like that's really what this is, is you're protecting yourself. Because like I told April last night, since her person just quit, like came in, quit right away. I said, it's awesome that she quit right away because our system allowed you to see right away that she wasn't the right person. Before it would take a month or two of feeling like you're wasting your time and then they quit. So now it's like, cool, I would rather have someone quit in the first couple of days because now, you know, it's fine. Like it's no worries. I get it. People change their mind. Um, I even tell people like if it's, I think it's within 72 hours, you can call and you can get your $35 back. So I've told people, a couple people to do that. Um, like, go ahead, get your money back. <laughs> it's okay. Next time, sleep on it. If they sleep on it, they won't do that. So I'll say, I know that you're ready to sign up, sleep on it. Let's talk tomorrow. Because if they, if they sleep on it and they're like, yeah, okay, I'm glad that I waited because I'm not ready right now. Good. And you know what? They still will be ready. They still will be thinking about it. They're just not ready yet. Their timing isn't perfect yet. And that's okay. So, um, okay. On here, um, for day three, let's talk about day three of, are manifesting 1,000 doll hairs. So let's talk yesterday. Um, I wanted to say that for all, first of all, put it in the chat if you did this. If you did the 20 to 25 different emotions and experiences that you felt that felt negative, that felt bad, um, that you can recall about your finances. And if you did this, drop it in the chat. Okay, April did 10. Yeah, it was tough. As I was writing them down, I was like, dang, I really can't think of anything else. Um, okay, so that's okay. If you didn't get a chance to write all these out, maybe grab a spouse or grab someone that can help jog your memory. Really try to think of, instead of think of, ex, of thinking of specific experiences, maybe think of like time frames in your life and narrow it down to that and then go from there. Like for me, I was like, I don't really know. Like, what would I write? And then I, I was thinking like childhood. I was thinking like high school and I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really have any. And then I was, then I was like, wait a minute. When I lived in the apartment, when the boys were little. What about that? Like John and I used to fight about the fact that I wanted to stop and buy coffee and we didn't have $2. Like literally would get into fights where I would be crying, like wanting to break up with him because it would escalate to that. Like, then I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Like I, all these memories are here. And then I started thinking of more. So maybe think of like time, time frame when you had hard times, it doesn't have to either. And it also doesn't have to be like you were flat broke to have these times because a lot of times they're not like a lot of my negative emotions were the way that I felt 
um, because I couldn't control my spending. And I was raised around a lot of money, but I was never raised what to do with it. So to me, I still, that's why I struggle so bad. So it doesn't just necessarily have to be like, I was so broke at the grocery store and the person behind me had to pay for my groceries. Like, it doesn't have to be that. It can be, I made all this money and I went and blew it on clothes and then knew after that it was a bad choice and I had buyer's remorse, but couldn't return it. And then my husband was mad at me and I slipped up. So it can be stuff like that, but I am proud of you, whether you wrote down one thing or 20 things, um, I'm just proud that you were able to do that, that you were able to forgive yourself and make that list. Um, because the, so the last 48 hours, if you are new and you haven't been doing our manifesting a thousand dollars with us, if you go back to my YouTube channel, you can watch day one, which was last Friday and day two was yesterday. And then today's day three. Um, so today we're going to be talking about feeling your way to money. Um, the last 48 hours, we really cleared out all of the stuff, all of the crap that we had laying around us. Uh, made that positive shift. Did, did anyone feel good after you did that? After you were like, wow, I got organized and cleaned out my space. Okay. Yes, I did too. I felt so good. I felt like I had way more room to just think and to just be there. Um, but today we're talking about feelings because feelings are so important. You know, we always talk about what our thoughts determine our actions, determine our results. And I, you've heard people say that before, but lately I'm really realizing that it's, it's crazy how true that actually is. And I've been trying to be more aware of my thoughts and I'm constantly thinking of negative things. I am constantly thinking of, oh, I'm going to do that. No, you're not. I'm going to do that. You don't have influence to do that. I'm going to change the world. No, you won't. Like it literally is like instantly in my head where I get this moment of like, <gasps> and then it's like, oh yeah. Like there's that person in me that wants to be like the only people that change the world are the people who are crazy enough to think that they can, you know, like that person's in me. That's like, let's go do it. And then it instantly is like, Shh, be quiet, go back over there. Like, and then I'm like, oh yeah. So your feelings are so important. Um, I want you to think of how you're feeling right now. Like what kind of emotions are you feeling right now? Do you feel happy? Do you feel irritated? Are you in a bad mood? Are you in a good mood? Think of your feelings, put them in the chat, write them down if you want. Uh, would love to see them in the chat, what some people are feeling. In therapy, my therapist is always telling me to check in with myself during the day of what emotions I'm feeling. She said every once in a while, just kind of do a check like, what emotions am I feeling? It's okay to feel this way. This is how I'm feeling. So, all right, Angela's feeling numb. April is feeling grateful, but also frustrated. Calm and hopeful. That's good. Feeling overwhelmed. Okay, so this is good. My feelings that I'm mostly feeling are mostly always negative emotions. Um, calm, peaceful, and relaxed. I'm feeling overwhelmed, but oddly content. That's good. It all starts with awareness, absolutely. So negative thoughts are going to bring a negative outcome. Positive thoughts are going to bring a positive outcome. If you sit here and say, oh my gosh, I'm so broke. I'm so broke. I'm so bad with spending money. I, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay that bill? What else is owed? I need to do my budget. I need to look at my bank account. I don't know if we have enough money. I, this sucks. I'm never going to make more money with Q. I'm never going to make more money in my business. If this is your thought process and that's what's going to happen, that's what you're going to attract because that's what you're putting out there. That's what you're looking for. If you're looking for the positive things and you're having positive thoughts, you're going to have a positive outcome. So thinking about having more money right now, I want you to think about that. Like think if you think if you right now had 
if I gave you a thousand dollars, like I said, everyone send me your Venmo because I'm going to Venmo you a thousand dollars right now. How would that make you feel? Most of us would feel probably pretty excited. Like, oh, heck yeah. Like I just got a thousand dollars. You would feel happy, but ironically enough, <laughs> money doesn't bring you happiness when you get it. It's the feeling of having money that you're after. It's not really actually having the money. It's about the feeling of having the money. Because, I mean, money standing alone is just paper. It's the value that you put on money is what gives you things. It's not, okay, here's a bunch of piece of paper. Here's the money. It's what are you going to go do with the money that is going to change your life? Because the money itself brings you freedom, the limitless possibilities, because now you have a million dollars in the bank. It's not the million dollars in the bank that you want. It's the feeling of having a million dollars, feeling confident, feeling accomplished, feeling successful, feeling like that feeling of those good things. So um, I want you to put in the chat what you are going to spend this thousand dollars on. And I know that Aubrey had us do this on day one. So if you missed it, do it again. If you already did it, do it again, if you can, um, to see, because this is what you have to first know before you get the homework that I'm going to give you. So what are you going to spend the money on? Why do you want more money? And don't even say a thousand dollars. Like I know we're manifesting a thousand dollars, but some of us are going to think bigger than that. And so like, why do you want more money? If I said, I'm going to give you a hundred grand, why, why do you want more money? What is it that you're here for? What is it that you're looking for? April, down payment on a house. I challenge you to figure out how much of a down payment on a house you'll need. To take it one step further and put it somewhere like I need $40,000 to put down on this house. And here it is right here. I'm going to do that. You could save it. You absolutely can. You don't have to spend it. Um, so you can, you can save it. Um, put it right into savings for my goal to get to six figures. Okay, Jenny, why do you want six figures in savings? Think about that. Do you want me to answer that? You can, yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, because I've never been good at savings. And so I want to prove to myself that I could do it and have that backup money. Or I know a lot of people want a down payment on a house. I would love to build a house again also, but you know, where you, you just, you have that there. It feels good to have that, even though I'm, I'm never going to probably touch it, <laughs> but being in the yeah. six figure club and I can still maintain my bills outside of that. I don't know. It's a feel good thing for sure. <laughs> yeah. So this goes exactly with what we're going to be talking about for homework so first figuring out why you want the money, why you want it. Saving to buy a car in cash. Ooh, that's good. I would save it and then use it to help my husband to take more time off of work. Um, get things for my family. Build a savings, savings. Um, okay, I am going to get this money. Um, yes, Zoom user, raising your hand. I don't know who you are, so I can't call your name. But did you mean to raise your hand? If so, unmute and <laughs> ask your question. Or maybe you didn't mean to. Um, my son's wedding. Aww. Family, help more than I do now. So many have ran into hardness. Um, loss of job, medical expenses. Okay. So here's what I want to tell you. You know why you want to save this money now you know why you're doing it, but it's not to have the money. It's about the feeling that's going to come from that. So your homework today is you are going to write down your five biggest feelings that you are going to feel when you get this money in the next 21 days. So let's say Jenny you hit your hundred grand in your savings account. How are you going to feel? You just said you're, you've never been good at saving. So you'll probably feel pretty proud of yourself. So that's one of the emotions you're going to feel is proud. 
So you're going to write down one of your biggest feelings and emotions, and then you're going to write down why. So I'm going to feel proud because I finally did it. I told myself I was going to do it and I did it. And I saved hundred thousand dollars and I'm in Sarah's club. And I told my husband and I made it happen. Or Linda, when you are able to write a check and give it to a family member because they ran into hard times and you're able to give that person a thousand dollars and say, Hey, here, go pay your mortgage. Or here's a gift card to the grocery store. Go fill your pantry. How are you going to feel when you get to do that? That feeling that you're going to feel, that's what we're after. We're not after actually having, having the money. Since money is just paper, we need to be aware of this whole process that it's just paper. And that's not what we're after is the money. We're after the feeling. We need to be aware of that while we're manifesting this. Because when Aubrey says money is energy, this is what she means. Money, the, the idea of having money a thousand dollars right now. It's not that you need the thousand dollars. It's that you need the feeling that's going to come with it. So what you're also going to do, and this is going to feel kind of silly, but this is what you're going to do. So you are going to experience these feelings in real life. So once you write these down and you write down how, like for me, I want to I um, took out a business loan and then I've been using it and I can't wait to just like repay the whole thing, prove to my husband that it was a good decision business wise and take my business to the next level and pay it back and close out the loan. And like I did it and pay off my medical bills. And that's what my, all my extra money is going to go towards. So I can't wait to feel so proud of myself and to show him that I did it. Like I can get him to believe it because he's just very naturally skeptical. I've told you guys that before. So he's like, whatever, babe, let's see if it works. And I'm like, no, it will work. I need you to believe that it's going to work. So this is going to prove to him that it's working and that's going to feel so good. So once you write down these five emotions and why you're going to feel these emotions, I want you to start feeling them every single day. So you can feel any emotion you want to. If right now I said to sit where you are, you can close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open. It's, you know, whatever you want. You can sit here and you can start to feel super accomplished. Just sitting here, feeling that emotion of like, oh my gosh, I did it. My favorite thing that I like to do. So um, Tony Robbins, and I'll find it, has a morning meditation that I did for a while. And then I kind of got away from it. I'd like to come back to it. But what he has you do is in the session, it's three different times. He has you close your eyes and you're meditating. And he tells you like, picture this light and it's in the sky and it comes down through your head and straight through down to your toes. And your, your eyes are closed. And he you go through this whole like thing that he's talking about. And it's all about like energy and whatever. And he has you think of three separate times. Um, the first time he has you do it, he says, think of a time. And I want you to do this right now. Think of a time that you felt so incredibly happy. The happiest time of your life. Maybe it was your wedding. Maybe it was the day your child was born. You finally hit that goal, that promotion. You bought your house. You started building your house, you, whatever it is, think of the time that you were the happiest you've ever been. Put it in the chat, put it in the chat when you're so happy. Um, Linda says, um, hearing you say it brings me to tears. Um, because you can feel that feeling and that emotion and it's so raw and it's there. And so that's good. Um, they say your why should be so big that it makes you cry. <laughs> you know, you're literally crying because of why you're here and what, what feelings that you're after and what you're going to be able to do. So Alicia, the day I met my husband, just being like, oh my gosh, so happy. I can't even believe it. So cool. Like just butterflies in your stomach, getting married, surrounded by family and love after dealing with a bad relationship felt so good. And still to this day. 
I finished and hit publish on my book. Oh my gosh. So cool. First time I found out I was pregnant as didn't think we could. Oh my gosh. I'm going to cry. These are so good. Um, having my first child. Okay. So you can feel these emotions and he has you close your eyes and let yourself smile. He says, like, let yourself smile and feel that emotion. And when I'm manifest, when I'm doing this and I'm meditating and he's and Tony's talking about it, I always cry. I'm like smiling, like laughing, kind of like so excited. One of the happiest times of my entire life. And I probably will like, I, I won't, um, I could cry talking about it. And it was in business. Actually, it was one of my most, my number one, most accomplished moment I've ever had where I was like, oh my gosh, we freaking did it was when I was very first asked to speak and train on stage at my very first bronze Academy. And I'd never spoken on stage before. And it was my ultimate goal is to train on stage. Like that's all I've ever wanted to do in this industry is train on stage. And so Jake asked me to train. I felt so cool because they had me pick out my walkout song. He was like, okay. And I got an email that was like, oh, you know, congratulations speaker. We need you to arrive early and this is what you need to wear and make sure your hair and makeup look like this and pick your song. And, you know, when you come in, you're going to get mic'd up in the back. And I just like the whole process was so exciting for me, but the most exciting thing ever was when I got mic'd up and my husband was sitting there and my mom and um, some of our original leaders were sitting at the table with me and I got up and I went and got mic'd. And then Jake announced me onto the stage and said, okay, this person coming up next, you know, she's new. She's, you guys have been seeing her do all this stuff and blah, 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 Taryn Sarconi. And my song turned on and I ran up the stage and I was waving and it was such an amazing moment to feel because I'd always talked about having a walkout song. I always talked about being on stage. I could feel it. I knew what it would feel like to do it because I thought about it. It was on my vision board. I felt those feelings all the time. And so right now I could close my eyes and bring myself right back to that feeling. In fact, that's the song that wakes me up every single morning. That is my alarm clock noise is my walkout song. And so it's unstoppable by Sia. And so in the morning it goes off and it starts singing. I'm unstoppable. I'm, you know, all these things, like I think about that song all the time before I present, before I go to an event, when I'm in my car, I'm playing that song before I'm training on stage, I'm listening to that song. It's part of it because it brings out the emotion. So I love connecting songs to happy moments, like wedding songs, uh, maybe songs you had that you sang to your kids, because it brings out that excited emotion. It brings out that, that whole thing. So we're going to be feeling these emotions. So homework, five emotions that you're going to feel take a picture, post it in the um, breakfast club chat. And if you're not in the chat and you want to be, then just send me a private message on Facebook. I'll get you added to it. It's just a place for us to put resources and stuff in there. So that's what you're doing. That is day three. Tomorrow is day four. Um, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow, but for the, um, I know that we're like out of time, but I told Aubrey, I was like, I can't do this as fast as you can. Like 15 minutes done, 15 minutes done, 30 minutes. <laughs> like I can't do that. So it might not be as good as you want this to be, but I will go over my action list. Um, but I want to tell you guys that if you didn't see um, in the freedom movement, if you're not on our team, I can't just send me a message and I'll send these to you. But I posted last night three different IPA sheets that you can use and you can um, go in and print them out and use them every single day. We're starting a challenge today is the first day. We're going through the end of April. You're allowed to have two free freebie days. So it's 18 days, but really 16 days of IPAs. And if you wanna be in our challenge to hold yourself accountable and to fill out this form every single day, just send me a private message on Facebook. I'll add you to the group. And all you do is just take a picture of your sheet and post it in there every day. If you do all 16 days, you will get to spin the wheel that we have of prizes. And uh, if you just go to just like the news feed and the freedom movement, Erin, they're right there. You can just change it to be like most recent. 
Um, they're not in the files, they're in the album. So if you go to media and then go to albums, I created an album for them. So they're all in the same album. Um, but I am printing, I actually just printed my first sheet today and I am going to do this and um, really get consistent with doing these IPA sheets and showing up. So if you're not doing the homework to manifest a thousand dollars, it's not too late, get caught up today. Do it, do all the things that you need to do. Um, super easy. Day one was just clear out all your crap around you and get a hundred dollar bill and put it in your wallet. That's really all we did. Um, and day two is you make a list of like 20, 25 memories or experiences that have negative energy around them. Um, where you're then saying, I forgive you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you. After the end of each one, you're giving yourself forgiveness for those um, emotions and those memories. Um, and then today is the five things, the five feelings that you're going to feel when you hit this and then feel these every day. Don't just like stuff this away and never look at it. Actually go through and say, okay, I'm going to feel proud of myself right now. I'm feeling proud and sit here and feel proud of yourself and let yourself feel that. And then the next emotion and feel that because it's the energy that you're giving out. That's going to come back. So, um, yeah, IPA challenge starts today. I'm doing the presentation tonight. So if you want to invite anybody on, I'll be the person presenting. Um, and thank you so much for getting on. I'm excited for this. Thanks for posting in the chat and just being vulnerable and sharing some moments with me. I appreciate it. So I hope you have a great day. Happy Tuesday. And I will see you guys tomorrow. So bye.